Welcome to Zero Tolerance for our first episode of 5X Factor with Practical Machinists. Today's episode, we're going to discuss the why and the how of 5 axis machining. The why of 5 axis machining has a lot more answers, it's more important, and I'll go through the list right now. So, we have less setups, it's faster, it's more accurate, um, it gives you more capacity and throughput, and there's less EDM required. Now, I know I like to learn to burn. But it is, it is a nice feature when you can get something done quickly and it's not necessary to make an electrode and make that feature in it, especially if you can get it done here on the five axis. The how is, is almost as important, but the very most important part of the how is the mindset. The thinking of stock, the cost of stock. When I first started machining and was taught how to do molds and, and uh, machine details, I was taught to use the least amount of material saw cut it within a hundred thousand, square the blocks, and spend my time getting those blocks perfect. Today, we don't look at it that way anymore, and it's simply because our time costs more than the stock, and that was a mindset change. And that's a huge part of it, is the, the thought of using more stock, fixturing, and also the software. So it's the mindset, the process, the software and the fixturing, and those are the how, and we're gonna actually go through an example of a very simple insert that we have to make, and how we went from one way, which I would call old school, to a 5X factor. I wanna bring up this detail. Um, it's something that we use a lot of. We have an eight cavity mold that has this insert in it. We call it a cartridge. So when we're molding in the press, we can change these out quickly with taking two screws out, and pull the whole assembly out and put it back in. This part's pretty simple. It's got a lot of little details and we have to cut it on all, all six sides of this block. And I just wanna go through how we would normally do this when we first started. The process of finding a better way to do it in the middle and then when we went to five axis. Normally we would take this block and we would literally square it on a vise, but even, even if you had to make five or 10 of these inserts, you would get a larger piece, you would square it up, and then you could saw cut it off, and then actually mill it square. Make yourself a stop on the vise, drill the holes, set it up here, drill the holes this way, drill and tap these tiny 440 holes in here. Actually, I think they're 256, or even smaller than I'm, than I'm uh, remembering. But there's a lot of setups in doing them individually, or even in a bar. But this is how we originally did them. It got us through. And I don't recommend doing it like this anymore. This is a better way of doing these inserts is putting them in a block that's square. We can grind them all, grind it all together, actually machine the holes on the CNC, then put them in the wire, and then wire the whole profile instead of manually squaring these in a block in a mill. We can wire these out and have it unmanned. So it's machines running, and it's not a, it's not a person uh, working. It's not a labor hour. So this is actually uh, the next best way that we found to do these inserts. Um, but there was, there's still work to do after we wire them off, which ends up ending up, you're doing a lot of manual labor on this as well. It does work, we've done a lot of them, but I think there's a better way. After these were wired in a spree, we still need to do these holes on this side, this side, and then this pocket. So as much work as we saved here, it would be great if we didn't have to do another two setups. Here is the insert in CAD, and I want to show you how much uh, there is to it. So we have these small little holes, this is a 47,000 diameter, a 62,000 diameter, and two 256 holes that are tapped for some set screws. Then we have jack screws for these counterboard holes that bolt this insert down. But there is a lot of um, a lot of work into these little parts. So let me walk through our process now and mindset of using the 5x factor to make this happen. So the first thing we're going to need is the stock, which is going to be a chunk of steel P20 and we're going to mount it on our 3R system on our sunspot holder and then it's going to go into the 5-axis machine 
Here is the mindset and the thought process behind how we approach these inserts and trying to make them as efficient as we could using the five axis. So in order to machine these pockets, we would need to rotate it, rotate the block on all four sides like this and orientating them this way allowed us to get to all of the sides that need to be machined. This back side, which is an internal side, we don't need to do any work other than this top down cut. So this was actually a really good way to make this work. Um, once we get through the first set, we are then going to use the wire EDM to wire off one row. And then we're gonna do the counter bores back on our 3R system or sunspot holder. And we will be able to get through all of these inserts much faster, more accurate, and it's gonna save us a ton of time in the end. After we're done with the first layer and the wire EDM knocking off that first four inserts, um, you'll notice that we still have to put the counter bores back in. So the, the greatest thing about the fixturing is we have a setup in our mill, and we can do it in the three axis mill at this point, is put this fixture in the mill, um, and we can take and um, hide this first row of inserts that are now done. And obviously it didn't grab all the surfaces, but you can see what I'm talking about here. Let's turn off this toolpath. We'll hide this extra construction geometry and also these top surfaces too. Depending on your software, we're using Symmetron. Um, we put surfaces in once in a while just to block off areas that we don't want it, the toolpath to go into. Um, so that's the, after the first layer is wired off, we got to go back there and cut it, and we have a toolpath pre-made ready to go. And we'll repeat the, the process, and we'll be able to machine the counter bores in the same setup, um, and just reposting and running another program. Very efficient way of doing it. They go in and on and off on these fixtures, the three R setup with intense, and we are through these in no time compared to doing them the old school way. Five X factor for sure. Now that we're running the simulation on this on Symmetron, I want to talk about the mold maker's caution. So for me being a mold maker, I've always been scared to crash the machine. And having the simulation software is huge where you're getting in a hurry and you don't want to use it, it is a huge benefit, especially in five axis. You gotta run your simulations. Anything can happen and being a tool maker, you know that when it crashes, all the time you saved is gone. So this is a huge thing. Now that we've done the simulation, it's time to press go. And that's where it is very critical that you have enough courage, that you can press go. You've done all your precautions that you can think of and we're going to let the machine do what it's supposed to based on the simulation. So from a mold maker's perspective, we're running hundreds of programs we run one time. We want to make sure that we err on the side of caution, but don't let it stop us from continuing. So if you notice in some of the machining that we will show is our tool change and our rotations. We always move the cutter out of the way. We're usually making one piece or one insert and we got to make sure that it's going to be perfect. If you've noticed, most of our cuts have been what's called 3 plus 2 5 axis, which is literally rotating and then using 3 axis machining um, in a 5 axis machine. So this is the majority of the work that you see and mostly what we do, um, trying to hold high tolerance uh, mold components, inserts, and cavities and cores. So in a 5-axis machine, you can do 3-axis only, you can do 3 plus 2, 4 plus 1, and also full 5-axis. We will be exploring more of the 5-axis options as far as 4 plus 1 and full 5-axis as well in future episodes. Like a kid getting a new toy, I want to do something fun with my son. I took a GrabCAD file of a Tesla truck, expanded it to the wood block, and we, for the first time, made a Pinewood Derby on our 5-axis machine. Faster than I've ever made them before. I've been doing them, building them for 10 years because I've got four boys, and my son had a blast as we did this. And it's the first 
electric Pinewood Derby car, the Cybertruck. Like our Boy Scout troop says, we're allowed to use all the tools available. I recommend that you use all the tools you have available to do the best job you can. Thank you for joining us for our first episode of 5X Factor with Practical Machinist. We're going to get into more 5 axis. Remember to subscribe and like. If you want to see something specific, please put it in the comments. And I hope you enjoy the next episode. Welcome to Zero Tolerance for our first, ep first episode. I'm going to see that over. It gains. Well, there's a lot less wire work. Fudge.